Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a report list box. We'll use a list box to display specific reports to be printed in your Microsoft Access database. You can put the little list box anywhere you want, like on your main menu or on a report menu. The user can pick one of them, click on the print report button, and there goes the report. Today's question comes from Avery in Mesa, Arizona, one of my gold members. Avery asks, is there a way I can create a list box or a combo box that displays a list of the available reports in my database? And that should be a question mark. There we go. I usually edit these before I start reading them, but I missed that too. So don't worry about it, Avery. I don't need all of them, just a handful. I'd like to make it easy for the users to pick one and click a button to print it. I also don't want to have to add buttons to a menu every time I make a new report, which is often. Help. Actually, no, that's help? Question mark? <laughs> yes, of course, Avery, all we have to do is create a list box and put in that list box a list of the reports that you want to print. And we can do that by simply populating a table with the report name and then maybe a description. Let me show you how to do it. So here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free download from my website. You can go grab it. It's absolutely free. I'll put a link down below in the description. Or you can use whatever database you want. It doesn't matter. All right, main menu, it's got some simple stuff. Customer list. It's got a customer form. It's got orders. It's got a bunch of stuff in it. And I got videos that explain how this was built. So go watch those if you want to. Okay, so what I'd like is right here, I want to put a list box. It's got a list of all the available reports that are in my database. So let's come down here and see what I got. I got a blank template and I got order invoice. Let's make a few more fake reports just so we got some stuff in our database here. I am going to copy and paste that one there. Let's call that the customer report. All right, let's make one more copy and paste. Let's call this the contact report. All right, just so we got some stuff. Easier to have, easier to work with the database if we got stuff in it. Now let's go and make a table that will list all of our reports in it. So create table design. I need the report name, the actual name as it appears in the database. And I need a description to show up in the list box. I don't necessarily need an auto number for this table. It's a very limited use table. Usually I tell people, yes, put auto numbers in all your tables. This is an example where I actually don't want one because the wizard's going to mess with us if we put an auto number in here. I'll explain why later. So for this table, I just want the report, name, short text, and a description. That's it. Save it. Report T. And primary key defined. I'm going to say no because it'll add an ID. Let's make this report name the primary key. Usually I don't do this. I don't make text a primary key, but that's okay. You don't want to duplicate the same one twice. All right. Save it. Close it. Let's put some data in it. All right. We're just going to match what's down here. All right. So we got a report name and we got a description. Okay. So the report name has to be exactly what that is. So we've got a contact. R, right, contact, report, that's what the user sees. We've got a customer R, right, customer, list, report, whatever you want to say there. And then an order, invoice R, order, invoice. Okay, you can put whatever you want in here. Save it, close it. Now let's make a list box that goes right here. Design view, design, go to your toolbox, find yourself a list box. Now it can be a list box or a combo box. They're pretty much the same thing. The only difference is a list box is always open and a combo box you can type values into. That's really the only difference. Aside from that, they behave almost identically. All right, so we want the list box to get the values from a table. Yup. Which table? Report T. Yup. Okay, here we go. Bring over both fields. Now, this is why I said I don't want an ID. I've done this before a million times. If there is an ID here, if access, if this wizard sees an auto number, it's going to bring it over whether you pick it or not. And then it messes with what I want to do in the next step. All right, so that's why I don't like an ID in this table. It's a very simple table. There's going to be no relationships for it, so I'm not worried about the ID. All right, next. How do you want to sort it? Let's sort it by the description. That way you could do a little, you know, little in-list sorting if you want to. Put all the customer stuff together and start it off with customer in the description, right? Put all the order stuff together. All right, next. This is what it's going to look like. The key column is going to be hidden. See that? It hides it. Basically makes its width zero. I cover this in my combo box video, by the way. If you've never made a combo box before, go watch my relational combo box video. Pause this video, go watch that one, and then come back here. 
I go through this wizard in a lot more detail. All right, let's hit next. Description, doesn't matter. We're going to delete it anyways. Goodbye. All right, there's my list of reports. Let's give it a splash of color. I like to put some color in there. There we go. Now it's good. It's a little bit different color. Let's go with that. Okay, looks nice and pretty. Let's save it, close it, and take a look at what we got. All right, there we go. There's our list of reports from our report table right there. Now, my first column is that hidden column. It's got the actual report name in it. We can use that to open up the report because the value of this list box is going to be whatever's in that first hidden column. Let's give the list box a good name first. Open it up. Go to the All tab. And right here, we're going to change this to my report list. All right. Now, notice here under Data, for those of you who know SQL, see that? Report T, report name and description. That's it. If we had used the wizard and there was an ID in that table, it would have put the ID in here whether we wanted it or not. It's one of my pet peeves with access. I don't like that. Then you got to remember to refer to column one in the list box, which adds a level of complexity that beginners don't want to deal with. Okay? So now we're going to learn a tiny bit of VBA code. Yes, you could do this with a macro. No, just learn some VBA. It's real simple. It's not as mystical as programmers want you to think. Go watch my intro to VBA video. It's free. It's not very long. It'll give you all the basics. It'll demystify VBA. It's real simple. This, this requires one line of code, I think. One or two. All right? Real easy to do. Okay? So let's make a button. I'm just going to copy this Hello World button. I already made a button. I'm going to copy this guy. Copy, paste. It's right, right next door. Okay? Or just drop a command button down here and cancel the wizard. Okay? Change this guy to print report. Okay? And let's make the name of the button print report. We're really going to do a preview. You can make a separate button to print if you want to. I preview everything. I want to see it on the screen before I actually send it to the printer. Most of the time. Sometimes I'll make a separate little printer button. All right. Now keep in mind that this guy is called report list. All right. And the value of this is equal to whatever's down here. Okay. Ready? Right click. Come up to build event. All right, that puts you in the editor. Remember, pick Code Builder if you see that window. Of course, you went through my intro to VBA video, so you know this already, right? All right, this is old news to you now. All right, Print Report Click is where we are. What happens when we click on the Print Report button? Okay, well, first of all, let's just type in um, Message Box and then Report List. I want to see what value is in that report list. Okay, so come back over here, close this, save it, open it back up again and hit the button. Okay, invalid use of null. What does that mean? I didn't pick anything. All right, so hit end. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say right here, if is null report list, then exit sub. That says if the user didn't pick anything, exit out of there. Just don't do anything, watch. See, click, nothing happens. You gotta pick something first. Once you pick something now, now this list box has a value, I can then Message box. Let's see, order invoice R is what's actually in the hidden column over here on the left. Okay, now I don't want to message box this. What do I want to do? I want to open that report. So instead of message box, we're going to say do command dot open report. What's the report name? Report list has the value that I want. Okay, then it's comma. How do you want to see it? We're going to go AC view preview. If you want to send it to the printer, pick normal. Okay. And that's all we need. There's other stuff you could put in there, a filter name, a wear condition, all that. That's all we need right there. Like I said, one, maybe two lines of code. And the only reason we need the first line of code there is to deal with that they don't pick a value. So really, we can accomplish this with one line of code. See, it's not hard. That's it. That's all the programming you need. And now watch. Click. Okay. All right. <laughs> this order invoice requires the order form to be open. That's why it says enter parameter value. So that's a bad one to pick. <laughs> All right, you can't do this with reports that require other forms to be open. So let's just pick this one. Ready? Go. And it's oh, they're all the same one. We copied and pasted them, didn't we? Now I look silly. <laughs> all right, I'm going to open up that order form there. Okay, this guy has to be open because the order invoice R, the one we copied, is looking for this order ID. That's a different class. Go watch the invoicing lesson. All right, but watch, click, and there it is. See, it works. Trust me. It's just this report is looking for this value, so it knows which invoice to bring up. All right, want to do a different one? Click. See, let's change that word invoice. Let's do let's do the customer R 
design view, I'll just change this to customer. Just so we know what's working. Okay. Save it, close it, pick customer, list report, and there's your customers. All right, pick a different one, pick the order invoice, and there you go. See that? Yeah, yeah, I know, I should have made a different report. <laughs> but that's how you do it. That's that's the, nut sh the, the nutshell. That is it in a nutshell. <laughs> okay, that's how you can take a table, fill it up with values, right, the name of the report, the description, Make a list box out of it, and then make a button to open up that report. That's it. It's not that hard. Now, whenever you add a report, all you have to remember to do is just put it in the report table, and then your users will have access to it there. You'll kind of be making more buttons on forums and all that kind of stuff. Okay, and you can list just which reports that you want them to see. You don't have to put all of your reports in there. Okay, there, I fixed it. I went into each of these reports and I adjusted them so they don't give you that, pro that parameter prompt anymore. All right, here's a contact report. It's just contacts, right? Little contacts. They're real simple. Customer report. Okay, those are customers. All right, customer name, address over here, and invoices. I made all invoices, so it just displays all of them. All right, you can see here that there's only one in the system, but this way you don't get that prompt. It's not looking for one. Okay, because I know someone's going to download this one of the gold members, for example, and be like, hey, wait a minute, how come none of these work? Because they didn't pay attention in the video. <laughs> it happens, people, it happens. Okay. Want to learn more? In the extended cut for members, I show you how to do the exact same thing, but we don't use a table. There's no table to maintain. Okay? I'll show you how you can loop through the report objects in the database using VBA. For each of the reports that you want to show up in the list, you can assign a description attribute property to that report. Then we can read that property in in VBA. That's kind of cool. That's all in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of the extended cut videos. And gold members and up can download the templates. How do you become a member? Click the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full-length courses found on my website, and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select All to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like level one, level two is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free access beginner level one course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.